for smiling right into the camera. <laughs> we'll look at your lights. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everybody. This is a meeting of the, of the Scarborough Town Council. We're a little behind schedule this morning or this afternoon, but Sean will be joining us momentarily. So with that, I think we'll get started this afternoon. We're doing some budget reviews. So everybody in the public, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, Tom, I know we're, we're slated to do three different ones today, yes. starting with the library. So with that, I don't know if you want to introduce or go right Certainly to... Certainly. We have uh, Nancy here, uh, Director of the Library, and um, as is customary, if you have any opening remarks, uh, the Finance Committee seems amenable to kind of taking the lead from you, uh, and then certainly we'd yep. love to have some questions answered if possible. Absolutely. Be happy to. Let me introduce Bill Honorado, who's our uh, Board Treasurer. Hey, and uh, in the audience is also Emily Lee, Reed, Chair of the Board this year, and I haven't turned around in the last two minutes, but <laughs> last time I looked, Sue Puddington was back there, and Jenny Ketch, who, who are also members of our Board of Trustees, and then Catherine Morrison, who's our Adult Services Librarian, is there as well. She's right. also the Assistant Director Thank and had a Join part us. in the budget. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, our budget is a, a straightforward budget this year, and I will... Um, Note that the new format has really given us an opportunity to explain to you where the high points are. So you have that in writing, but I will speak to them just briefly for those folks who do not have it in front of them. We do have uh, some increases in personnel costs, uh, and I will explain those. We do have uh, the COLA that has been uh, recommended for the town employees and that's incorporated in our full-time payroll line. And we also incorporated that in our part-time payroll line. And then there is a line called salary adjustments, and that line represents merit increases for five employees. We did not give any merit increases last year to any of our employees. And this it follows the strategy of the town to do performance reviews each year and then have um, compelling purposes for a merit increase. So these folks have demonstrated that they um, are um, do a, a recognition of their, of their um, good work. The uh, other line that represents uh, adjustments for payroll is called New Hours Adult Services. In the past we've had, in fact, I don't remember now whether it's two or three years, we've requested a, uh, additional hours to make a part-time reference librarian uh, into a full-time position. Last year that request was about $24,000. We have not taken that approach this year. We have instead asked for additional hours for the current part-time position to bring it up to 37 hours. Um, that does several things. It allows us to provide a schedule to the person who's in the job that's um, sane, hmm. <laughs> um, fits their, their um, commute, fits our hours of need, and it also brings them below the larger threshold that brings benefits into play. So at the point it becomes full-time, you would add retirement and a, a couple of other benefits. By keeping them below that level, we are still offering prorated medical insurance, which this person does use. And um, as I said, it, it works out nicely for us in terms of the hours that we need for the person to do public service. So it's uh, a bit of a change in our approach, but it works well for us, and we hope it's um, something that the council can um, um, encourage as well. So those are the primary <laughs> areas of payroll. We do have a large increase in medical insurance. That shouldn't be a surprise with um, health care reform as it is. There are some people who are now on our health care plan. Again, if they're part-time, they are prorated. They do pay a portion of that. Uh, we do have from time to time changes in, in uh, personal cir circumstances where a person might have been on a family plan before and now are on the library plan. So that shifts from year to year. We also we do use the main um, municipal health trust as, as the town, so those rates are based on what the health trust provides. We're fortunate that the health, health trust typically uses some of their reserve funds to keep premiums at a fairly, um, by standards, low, <laughs> um, low increase. We have projected a 10% increase next year starting in January for the medical insurance premiums. So far, we've not had a 10% increase, so we're hopeful that it will be under that. We also have some increases in our uh, collections area. We've uh, made an attempt to adjust, uh, put a little more emphasis again into the print materials, in large print particularly. We have had an interesting 
shift in the popularity of large print materials. We have an aging population. Uh, we also have an increase shown for uh, electronic or e-books. So we're not um, playing favorites one way or the other. It's just that we're identifying the need and the, and the population that's using certain kinds of materials. We also have a, a request that will adjust between our electronic resources and our non-book resources, and that's sort of a finite way of saying, or a finessed way of saying, one is on disk and one is electronic. Non-book resources are on disk and electronic are virtual. Uh, so we are putting a little more emphasis. We're taking some from the, um, the disks and putting them into the electronic. And we're also trying to adopt a new package this year that will provide uh, language, foreign language um, services, which we have not been able to afford in the past, and we feel it's our, our library is large enough, the demand is there, that we'd like to uh, adopt one of those services. And then there's one more area uh, that refers to <coughs> materials repair and digitization, and that represents an, a brand new product that we have at the library. We received a grant that was about $23,000 from a foundation to digitize all of our local newspapers going back decades. Uh, we'd like to make sure we retain that updated uh, file, so we have included money in that line, which used to be just binding. It just represents the new technologies. The binding is now digitization. Um, we will try to keep that file updated. And it's really terrific if you haven't had a chance. If you want to go back into any of the old newspapers, it's a keyword search. Go to our website, pull up the newspaper icon, and it's a lot of fun. So that's the other high point. Um, I'm glad to answer any other questions you might have on the, on the budget, um, but I think those are the, the parts that uh, might be worth some explanation. Go ahead. Uh, well, <clears throat> I'll start, I guess. Um, so um, a couple questions. Um, <coughs> the first thing is the uh, library employees, are they um, covered under a municipal contract or is that a separate contract and you just separate use contract. The <coughs> and that's, uh, that's a good question. I'll just expand a little yep. bit on it. The library is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation, and our employees are employees of the corporation. Mm -hmm. We have a memorandum of understanding with the town that essentially our employees will be treated effectively like a town employee, so the benefits the town employees receive, the library staff will also participate in. But because we are a separate contract, Maine Municipal Association has insisted that we have our own contract, mm -hmm. and we do have an affiliate membership with Maine Municipal. Um, so all of our insurances, we've had to go out and uh, find the best deal we can, with the exception of Maine Municipal. Okay. Um, uh, then in terms of the, um, your digitization process, mm -hmm. are you keeping that, is that going into a cloud type of storage system, or is there backups on, on site, or how, is that, how does that work? Both. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, there is an opportunity to purchase a microfilm mm -hmm. version of it, which um, ironically is still a good thing. Uh, if you think about the way technology changes from generation to generation, there will be a time when we'll be glad to have microfilm because we won't have to worry about which scanner or which reader we're using. Mm -hmm. That old standardized microfilm will always be there for us and we can actually turn back to that and digitize from that again. So there are a couple of options available and, and our product is available to do both. Okay. And then the foreign language services that you guys are offering, is that like a Rosetta Stone kind of thing mm -hmm. or is there a different it, program? We won't use Rosetta Stone probably Similar. because of the cost, but there are three other packages we're looking at as, um, as a possibility. All right. Um, then the last question I have is actually a budget-related one, believe it or not. Um, looking at the contracted services line in your overall budget picture, <coughs> you're, you're up about 13.4% this year. Mm -hmm. Um, can you help me understand a little bit what's driving that contracted service or what's in the contracted services and, and is that a um, <coughs> services that staff could be doing but there's not enough staff? Is there additional contracted services that are being employed or what's, what's, what's underneath that, that, uh, that increase, if you will? Tom, do you have the colored version? I don't, I don't have my version that shows those highlighted moments. Just, just from the big guess. picture, just from the big picture stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't need like definite details. I'm going to guess it's probably stuff. the audit, the one. Okay. Um, it might be, you got it? Yeah. It's, it's top list. Thank you. I'm still not seeing it. That's all? This, this is all, everything under the contracted services. Oh, I see line. where it is. Okay, yeah. we got it. 
<laughs> <laughs> the e-books, ironically, because e-books are licenses. Okay. So that's a contract. Um, telephone, building insurance is under there. Mileage, which is a small number. Our postage and courier, that's the, uh, the courier is the service that delivers the books back and forth to the library for our interlibrary loan system, which is a huge service. The accounting, mm -hmm. legal services and licenses, which is small, that just represents our state nonprofit filings. And then the audit and tax preparation, and then our newsletter is under there. So, right. so that's not a that's not necessarily a. Is there anything in there that's a one-time hit, or is that st you know st things that are going to be sustained? Ongoing, every ongoing, one of them. Okay. The um, okay. the audit we do a three-year contract, <coughs> so we can predict what that is likely to be, yep. and um, all of the rest of them are <coughs> are standard. Okay. It's it's just just thing. Yeah, I think the question is is just if it's a 13 percent increase from last year, that's what's, the e what's really that's the e-books driving it. That book is about 4,500 of it is the ebook. So e about 5,300 bucks, 4,500 is the ebook. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's something different. We didn't have that last year or didn't have that same. Um, we're just, it's, it's being, um, it's interesting. It's, there's another line in the budget that's been reduced to offset that $4,500. Yeah. So. And honestly, in the size of the budget, it's small potatoes. I'm just curious because, uh, you know, if that number shows up, the, you, the first question is why is it so high? They don't look at the dollar value. It's how could something align and go up X percent? So exactly. I, I appreciate the completely. explanation. Thank Happy. you. I'm glad Tom was here to bail me out on the car. <laughs> um, just can you, th do you have the breakout just roughly on, on wages and benefits which are going up? 60,000. What what sort of what does the expansion to seven hours drive of that, and what does sort of health care drive of that? Well, just, just well, Nancy's digging it out. We did provide uh, this one sheet that should have been <coughs> in place. Yeah, it's up there. This simply shows a breakout of that wage and benefits line in the narrative. It shows you which is wage and which is benefits. We can provide further detail, but <laughs> frankly. We're trying to respect mm -hmm. being a bit of above the fray, but you know it's, it's, it's there if we want to get into that level of detail. So that this is uh, across all departments. Mm -hmm. You can find a library about two thirds of the way down the page. Yeah. So you're referring just to the seven hour position, the seven hour edition. Yeah. Seven thousand two hundred of that is wage. Wage early. Yeah. So, and twenty three hundred plus is benefit is the uh, medical. Fifty uh, five hundred fifty one is FICA Medicare. So the cost to implement those extra seven hours is at the ten thousand one hundred sixteen dollars. Exactly. So that includes the salary and benefits, which would be FICA, Medicare, and health insurance. So about ten thousand dollars. Okay. Yep. Yep. And just one last question, because I was mm -hmm. curious to see that you actually done under a bullet here. It said natural ga gas costs increase. I was kind of surprised because energy seems to be going the other direction. So what what do you net, is that how you what's natural gas used for at the library? Is that heat? It's the heat. Oh, it is right, the heat. Oh, right, okay. and it does come under contract, yeah. and we're bound by whatever the world market is doing. Huh. Um, and there's um, there's it's a science higher than oil. Okay. It's higher than oil. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, I mean oil's right coming way down, but I thought natural gas mm -hmm. was coming down too, or at least. <coughs> But you're showing an increase, which is just We have a multi-year contract. Yeah. Um, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's not. As so often is the case, you do your best with the crazy eight ball and hope that you get it right. So, so We usually do get it right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just wanted to piggyback on the question with the natural gas. Are you contracting that with the town, or is that a separate? You're doing all that stuff separately? We have a, we have a relationship where we've gone to the same vendor for the last several years and they have contracts with a number of municipalities so they mm -hmm. tend to give us a fair mm -hmm. rate mm -hmm. um, but that's a conversation we have every time the contract comes up it's mm -hmm. really the wild west out there it's very difficult to, to really come down with that mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in a way that makes you feel really confident this is the first year that the town has been a big purchaser of natural gas really with the advent of the trigen so we're going to get um, educated and far more involved, and I think this might be something that we <coughs> might hire a consultant to help us source out the best pricing. Um, there's some real unique things with seasonality and, sure. and the like, sure. and I'm certainly pleased to share that knowledge base mm -hmm. with Nancy, and maybe she can piggyback on those bids. Mm -hmm. 
Well, We're always happy to do that. I mean, from the perspective, I know the school is also a big purchaser. I don't know if it makes sense to, I mean, there's only so many natural gas suppliers in the region. Right. Um, if it makes sense to try and bundle for volume across the board and, and then everybody benefits I a little bit I historically have relied on Todd Jepson upstairs yeah. because he buys mm -hmm. so much more and, right. and, and really understands the market better than I do. And I promise that, that Tom didn't pass me anything to say this, but when there was a purchasing agent. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did um, <laughs> often go to the purchasing yep. agent for some assistance. So okay. That was a help. Okay. Nancy, first I have to apologize for being late. I was actually at home Apology working and on a conference call, so I apologize. Um, can you refresh my memory on your um, uh, employee contract for the pool in which your insurance is pooled? Um, are you pooled with the municipal no. the MMA? Through the, you're strictly pooled by yourself or with other librarians throughout the state? We're or pooled how? with other groups of that type, they have a, an affiliate cluster, okay. so it might be a, a sewer <coughs> district or a water district or other libraries, they have a, a whole um, affiliated cluster. So it is a different rate than the town receives. They, we're, we're not self-insured, we are part of a group. Sure. Tom, do, just that, mm -hmm. it's purely curiosity to see how it reacts. Um, has that cluster performed or uh, the increases in the benefits been similar to that of the on the municipal side, is it completely different? Is it? I don't know that. I've not spent the time to understand. I, 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 I would be surprised, and she's shaking her head yes. I guess I am surprised to hear that it is. Um, the characteristics of library or Sioux District employees are not materially different than than uh, municipal employees. So okay. I, 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 I wouldn't think there would be great experience differences of that population, if you will. Uh, but. Maybe there are. I have, a, I have a letter I can share with you, Sean, that um, each year they give us a letter that describes the logic behind their increases. It, and it, they do have different rates. And it may be slightly different rates in pricing for affiliates. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, best rates are to the member That's communities true. first, That's and there true. might be some pre slight premium. I think it still beats the heck out of the marketplace. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely yeah. uh, or is very competitive in the market. Sure. Yeah, we've also, um, in past years, gone through the main association, <coughs> main association of nonprofits. Uh, to look at their group to see how that compares. And May Municipal always comes in way below and is a much better value. Okay. Great. Any other questions? No, I'm good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we kind of started, kind of yeah. skipped over the approval of the Yeah, we'll get <coughs> Great. Bedco well, next, if you're ready. Sedco is shown on tab 4, page 54, although we should point out uh, a separate new page was distributed. We detected uh, an oversight. It's not a huge dollar amount, but it's significant enough that we certainly want to correct it. And I'll let Karen speak to it. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Karen Martin with the Scarborough Economic Development Corporation. Uh, thank you for letting me come and talk to you about um, the budget that my board is presenting to you. And I want to take the opportunity to introduce my board chair, Kevin Freeman. And I always like to take an opportunity in public to say thank you to my board of directors because they work hard all year round. They go to all sorts of um, events and functions for us and they are representing the town of Scarborough and helping us build economic development here. So I um, always like to take the time to say thank you. Um, you know, again, uh, the Board of Directors has uh, uh, worked through this budget and is presenting it to you. I'm presenting to you on their behalf. Um, I also want to say we certainly have two council liaisons that have helped us greatly, Mr. our Councilor Babine and um, Councilor Rowan, who's here today as well. Um, so. Our budget is pretty straightforward, except for one small um, element that you'll see um, if you look at the revised page. Um, staff, let's start with wages and salaries first. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Unlike the library, our wages and salaries, or our um, payroll benefits, are done through the town. Um, and so we are following the town's um, really step increases and um, cost of living increases. So that's a, um, if I can read correctly, 3.6%. Um, about a little over 3% is really the wages and benefits. 
um, are the wages, benefits are the health benefits, and those did go up um, a little over 9%. And I think you were mm -hmm. shown here in this, in this pad. Mm -hmm. um, so that's fairly straightforward. What's a little bit different is contracted services. And contracted services is maybe a funny name because it's not like we're going out and engaging in contracts um, with folks. That's really our standard operating budget. That's our, you know, utilities, phones, um, all the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so the budget that we had submitted originally to the town um, really had about a $600 increase, um, representing about 1.5%, 1.4%. Um, what we did do, um, along with the uh, um, finance director, is we did take a cost that was for um, our property insurance and a couple of other things that has traditionally been on the town side of the budget, and they've paid it. Well, it's just getting realigned into our budget. So um, we are showing a $2,660 increase in the budget. That's why the uh, contracted services is going up by 7.7%. Without that switch, it would be 1.4% increase. Um, so just an accounting matter. Um, that amount was so small in comparison to the overall property casualty coverage, and frankly, we just did never break it out. But uh, we isolated that cost, and I think by right, we, we ought to show it where, where it should be. Did, did that cost adjustment come because of the location that you're at uh, now, or, or was that just your percentage of the overall? It's always been buried in there. Okay. You'll see a commensurate decrease on the town side. Yeah. I mean, it, that number is so big, it, it, it did drop in the bucket, relatively speaking. But yeah. uh, it's always been in there. There's nothing unique and different about the space they're in now. Okay. Right. Correct. Um, so again, uh, that's a, about 1.4%. The $600 increase that we're showing is really our internet bill. Um, as you can see in our highlights this year, we really did concentrate on our website, and we kept finding it was taking us like overnight to load images to the site. Mm. So we finally gave in and um, changed our contract with Time Warner Cable, and we went from, you know, 15 megabytes per second download to 35. Um, we just we just couldn't get it done without increasing the speed. And so we're carrying that through for next year. Um, the only other small increase that we did have is we did cut back on our cleaning services <laughs> last year. <laughs> and so we decided it was... Um, it was not as productive having us <laughs> empty the trash each 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 year. So we did. It's twenty five dollars a month um, to have our landlord provide cleaning services. So we did it. We did add that to our budget. Um, we felt a little bit bad about it, but again, <laughs> several trips out to the uh, to the trash can in the in, in the rain, and we thought, you know, twenty five bucks a, a night and not having a vacuum would be good. Workers come. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, anyway, so that that's our budget. Um, I guess I would take, like to take a minute and really um, talk about some of our accomplishments really fast. We did mm -hmm. talk about the website. Um, it, we we really devoted a lot of resources to make that user friendly and really speak to all parts of the town. Whether you're growing your business, you're starting a business, or you're looking to come here. In fact, I've been um, really pleased with some of the numbers that we've looked at in terms of who's visiting. Um, I think I noted in the report that we've had people visiting our website from 46 states mm. and from countries all over the world. Really? Um, yeah. That's I, interesting. I know, and I, I think as we continue to build those resources, we'll continue to see that. Um, and I just think it's our way of speaking to the world, and that's been very important to us. Um, you know, and then next year what we're doing in fiscal year 2017 is we're building on what we have, which is basically a business-to-business -business site. So we're adding to that a visitor industry site, our visitor site. So we'll, we already own uh, visitscarboroughmaine.org, so we'll be fleshing that out. And I think that um, piece will really speak to residents as well because we'll be talking about residents and activities and other things. Um, so we hope that's going to be a real benefit, both from an economic development side, but also from the town side. Um, I guess I'll stop because 
I don't have to use the whole half hour, Colette. Reminded me. She goes, do not use the whole half hour <laughs> under penalty. <laughs> She's the enforcer, is she? Yes, yes. So if I can answer any questions or if Kevin can answer any questions, yeah, this, we'd be happy this, to. This is kind of off track, but this is fascinating. You said you're getting a lot of international pings. Can you yeah. tell what they're pinging when they come in? The um, top items that they're pinging is Scarborough 101, which really describes, you know, what it's like to be in Scarborough, yeah. um, you know, population, demographics, and all of that. And uh, interestingly, they're pinging some of the um, how-to. You know, we have a big section about, you know, how to get a permit, how to uh, find out your zoning, how to find out, um, you know, different locations in town. And so those are the two items that they're really looking at. I mean, do you sense there are businesses that are looking <coughs> to invest here, or do you? It's well, it's hard to know right now. I think I'm going to know more next year. Um, we really are doing some international work starting this year and into next year because of a grant that we have uh, through the Maine International Trade Center. Um, in fact, we now have a business development consultant that is um, being paid for through the grant, and they're representing. Uh, Scarborough, Portland, Falmouth, Westbrook, um, and who am I leaving out? Did I say South Portland? Portland? South Portland. Yeah, the five communities, um, and they are they are located in London and are reaching out to um, particularly bioscience companies on our behalf. Mm -hmm. And so we have part of the reason we wanted to build the website last year is to have that in place for the business development consultant, and then. One of their tasks, aside from reaching out on our behalf, um, is to look at the website and design really an international um, piece, an international core to the website. So they'll be doing that work for us. Um, we do have a joint development site that the um, five or six communities um, really have put together. He's going to be working on that, um, but they will also do a piece for all of our individual sites. So we hope to be really speaking um, to the world on behalf of the Portland region. Cool. So I, I, I mean, I definitely appreciate the, all the, uh, the uh, virtual work and the, and the social media work. Can you uh, maybe help us a little bit understand the personal outreach stuff? What's going on with sure. the face-to-face -face stuff? And sure. Are you seeing an uptick in interest there? Is there mm -hmm. a lot more, uh, you know, opportunities to really bring people in and show them the wonderful things we have here, or is it? There are. There, there are a couple of things that, that happen um, locally. Number one, you know, we reach out through ads and through the Scarborough Chamber of Commerce and through By Local. Um, we are available for counseling for anybody who wants to walk in the door or make an appointment. Um, so we do see a lot of folks who are getting ready to start, are dreaming about starting um, a business. And we also see a lot of, I shouldn't say a lot, um, a core of our direct business piece are people who are having a little bit of trouble. They're either trying to do a project through town and they really need a little bit of guidance on, on how to work through um, you know, doing a project. Sometimes they're in financial, not distress, but they're how do I go to the next level of business? Mm -hmm. And we get them connected, That's something Sean is certainly familiar with. Um, how do we get them connected to um, one, an appropriate banker, the um, SBA, and also um, we are represented, or, or the Greater Portland Council of Governments has two loan funds that we participate in. So we'll try to help them find the gap financing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, um, matter of fact, Kevin and I were working with a, a banker this morning, and what we needed was um, a partner for a company. And that's something that we try to, to work out, too. It's very personal. It's very much knowing who's out there, who's looking, and trying to put people together. Um, so we do a lot of that. Um, we also try to do um, really some a lot of image building in town. And we think that's incredibly important to have a positive image of the town, put that out in the airways and in the newspapers. Thank you, Mike. And uh, uh, you know, talk about what's really happening in town and the logistics, the positive view of the residents, and those types of things. And that's really part of what we do too. It's why we involve ourselves in things like 
um, the calendar, the scarboroughcalendar.com that we did. Um, and that was going to lead me into my next question. Maybe can you elaborate a little bit on how you're you're working with the other departments in town sure. for that Scarborough branding kind of thing? Absolutely. Uh, you know, um, I notice you've got um, you know uh, involvement in the Star Communities program as well, and, and maybe elaborate a little bit on what role SEDCO plays in that, and sure. it, whether it's coordinating effort or, or something like that. Yeah. Um, we at, at SEDCO we we really try to. Um, work with all different departments, particularly if they're looking for information. Um, we, I think we have a core uh, competency in finding out what's going on and, and um, putting information together. So we try to be a resource, particularly when people are doing grants. We certainly have a natural affinity for working with the planning department. Um, you know, I'm a planner by, by education and training. Um, so we do work collectively with the planning department on ordinance development, um, changes and certainly with um, uh, people coming through the process um, when they have difficulty or when there are questions. Sometimes people have already started a relationship with me so they feel like well I'd just rather call you than you know five other people or, or you know they just have a comfort with me so I call Dan or whatever and ask the question they could directly call Dan for but again it's about relationships. Um, so we, we certainly work with uh, the planning department on those types of projects. And then we feel strongly about being involved in the comprehensive plan. And Tom did reach out to us regarding the STAR communities. Again, I think it's a core competency for us in terms of putting information together, looking at benchmarking, looking at measures of sustainability. Um, that goes hand in hand with economic development and economic policy development in particular. Um, so we are committed to working with the town on that project and I think the planning department and SEDCO work seamlessly um, and we want to be that resource um, and I really feel it's important for the board to be involved as well um, because we know that we're reaching a point where it's time to look at our uh, really our policy development areas within economic development. Um, we've really taken a broad interpretation of marketing and looking at the town as a whole and marketing um, different areas um, really uh, together. But I think as we continue to re refine our growth areas and continue to <coughs> refine what the citizens want, it makes it clearer for us in terms of marketing Oak Hill versus marketing Dunstan. They are different and they may need different marketing um, tools. So that's part of this overall comprehensive plan. It's part of the STAR communities. It's part of looking forward to the next 10 years to say what is it that we as a community want and Karen go out and get those things and go out and find the development and nurture the development that makes sense to the community. Um, and all of that goes hand in hand. Sorry, long-winded answer. No, no, thank you. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, um, unrelated to the budget because it's a pretty easy budget. And first, I want to say thank you to both of you because you've been an extreme help to the finance committee in the past, and you will be this year because you have uh, served as a moderator for our public forum, as well as uh, um, hit the moderator's, moderator's assistant. So I want to say thank you because it's uh, a very good exercise, and we appreciate the help uh, very much. You reminded me it's a week from tonight. I know. <laughs> Um, the second piece I wanted uh, just to mention is that I'm going to uh, probably talk to the chairman, um, Mr. Donovan. Is I'd love to have a workshop with SEDCO, sure. one, so that the whole board can get to know you <coughs> as well as the board if they're um, able to attend, but more so I'd love to focus on um, uh, Hagus Parkway. I sure. mean, it's been about 15 years since we mm -hmm. really took that, went down that path. There hasn't been a lot of development, uh, in fact, very little development around that. I'd love to understand what the challenges mm -hmm. are as well as what the potential is and what we can do as a council as a whole uh, to support that because it uh, probably would require some financial backing by the town um, to undertake that. Um, everything costs, so <laughs> that's why I say that, but I'd love to understand mm -hmm. what we could do other than, you know, we've always been there to support changes to the ordinances, you know, whether it's a small batch, pa um, small batch processing mm -hmm. change in the ordinance or whatever it might be, but is there something else that we can do that might be a little bit more substantive? Um, to either relabel Higgins Parkway, to mm -hmm. rebrand it, to whatever it might take to, uh, this is the time that. Um, Absolutely. 
which co ties into the whole international okay. outreach Absolutely. and the biomedical uh, kind of uh, mm -hmm. perspective that we've always looked at for that area. A absolutely. In fact, the, the board has asked those very same questions yeah. and we've targeted our May board meeting to really dig in. Um, Dan Bacon will be coming to our meeting in May and we really want to um, come up with what is it that we're going to do in the short term yeah. and then what's the long term version. And some of the long term may, may be affected by um, what we decide in the comp plan. But there's some short-term activity that I think we need to um, look at and develop some guidance on and do that really together with the planning department and with the, with the town. Um, but I do think it's, the time has come to um, really take some perhaps different actions. And maybe we can talk about mm -hmm. the timing that would be appropriate to involve Absolutely. the conversation with the council as well. Yeah. That'd be great. If I could just give the... Yeah. So credit to Karen, she's certainly deserving of much more, but just two quick things. Um, the council came up with communications as a big priority and my senior staff and I went through a fairly simplified version of uh, strategic planning and co communications came up um, chief among all the, all the things. Karen really took it upon herself and is, is really leading that initiative in many respects. Community calendar is one example, she's also convened a group of staff here in this building, um, uh, what do we call it, a uh, newsletter? Task force. It's a task force, not a committee. Task force. <laughs> it's really, uh, she's got a, a great facility to organize people and does it in a, in a fun kind of way that people want to be part of it. And so I, I really have come to appreciate and rely on Karen uh, in many, many ways that, you know, may step the field from SEDCO's direct mission, but I think there's a, there's a, there's a positive gain for all of us. And she brings a, a certain set of um, energy and talent and skill that um, that's really appreciated. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> anything anything oh, else? Good. I think we're all set. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> First time I've seen you so quiet, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy he's not firing questions at me. I know. <laughs> for us for everything. Can you save enough for next Wednesday? That's right. Thank you. So then we have finance. Uh, as Ruth comes up, um, just to remind, we are going to be cutting this session short. We yep. have an executive session at 5.15. Although the way that will work, the full council will come here, you'll open your regular meeting, and you know, the first motion will be to go into the executive session. So just be mindful, maybe about 5.10 or so, if you look to wrap up. Uh, Ruth and I are here throughout. I think the schedule is built, so there's a little extra time at the back end. So let's do as much as we can today. If there's a couple of pieces we don't get to, we can start right off with those at the, the next session. So with that, I think you know Ruth. <laughs> Hi, and I think you know Gina Kluke, she's the Deputy Finance Director. Sorry, could you state your full name and address for the record? Bruce <laughs> Porter, Finance Director. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sean's aware of it. Sean's going to mention that Ruth was wanting to shout from the rooftops, appropriately so, that uh, Standard & Poor's is upgrading a bond rating. Um, wow. Ruin my surprise. Well, <laughs> you can certainly have it at the council meeting tonight, but uh, Ruth and Gina uh -huh. uh, do a lot of are do a lot of credit for yeah. for making that step. Great. I know they're kind of cautious about when you can actually announce it, right. but uh, they Got have uh, <laughs> talked about it a little bit. They talked about our improved reserves, our improved debt profile, cool. retaking control of Highgus Parkway, TIF, strong stable management, strong economy, and stable overall. So. Great. Does this come before we're in the market for the bonds you were doing this spring? They rate them first and then it goes out to the market okay. and hopefully that. So it should be that some good news maybe? It should be some hopefully better news than maybe what we originally thought. Good. So. And we're for s and we're us. one step above the highest. Uh, so we're really doing well in that regard. We'll get a two or three page write-up from State of Board that they've sent out as kind of a prospectus that, got, that, that speaks to each one of those factors um, that caused the upgrade. So we'll mm -hmm. share that one as soon as we get it. Um, I don't know how you want to do this. We can start with the revenues. Yeah. There are not a lot of revenues. Um, revenues are on tab three, page two. Online they are on page 29. And
and we have an overall roughly $139 increase. We did not change our excise revenues, although we are currently approximately 89% collected as of yesterday. So I think we're, uh, we're on track to make our estimate for the current year. We haven't really adjusted too many of the other ones. A lot of them, they just go up and down. So it's rather than, you know, keep playing that up and down game, we just leave it consistent. The only other one I might take a look at again towards the end of the budget process is the interest on taxes. So the exercise is something that uh, we'll, we'll continue to monitor and check back in. That may be an area you want to look back to um, as you kind of wrap up your recommendations. The other piece that doesn't show on the revenue page, but I think is um, an increase this year is the homestead exemption. Uh, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but the uh, current exemption for citizens is 10,000. 10, it's going to 15 next mm -hmm. year. And we get that money back in the form of state reimbursement. So we'll be seeing an increase in our homestead exemption reimbursement from the state. So that will help us in our bottom line to help offset the amount we're giving back to the citizens or not charging them initially. Okay. So, so on the revenue side, we, and we, we spoke about this before, um, can you explain the, 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 the difference in investment interest 2015 to 2016? That's a very large difference, but I know you, you explained that to me very clearly before. But um, The interest market is, or the investment market hasn't, been all that great. If it's like a 1%, we're doing, yeah. But back in the day, we used to earn 17 or 18%. So 1% to me is like totally awful. But <laughs> um, they, uh, the amounts that are showing in this line are the either the accrued interest from bond proceeds or bond premiums themselves. Uh, we show those as revenues, but then we turn around um, those premiums come in and we use them to offset debt payments mm -hmm. down the road. So. So even though it looks like we're making a lot of money, it's really related to the bond issues. And that and that difference, I mean, the that's bond premium. I think you explained it to me before. The 2015 actual versus where we're at. And I mean, that's a significant. It's a $360,000 difference. That's almost purely bond premium. Right? All bond premium. Yeah. And I think we've used most of that bond premium last year, and the rest of it will be used this year. Uh, between the town and the school. And then if there's no other revenue questions, I don't have any CIP. Um, under the... I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, just to note, um, because there's going to be um, um, possibly, well, there's other implications around bond premiums. I just want to make a note. So the 300, an actual 2015, the 387, that's bond premiums related only to municipal debt. This is the to uh, this is the for the town portion, I believe. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's, credited it's the excluding school. the schools. It there's this doesn't show under the school operating budget. It shows under the school CIP. Right. I just want to make sure that correct. Get, that's under. And then under tab four, page 17 in the budget book and online, it's on page 66. Is the finance department budget. And overall, as we have in the past, the biggest increase to our budget would have been the request for a couple of new positions or one new position and one reinstatement, which would be the purchasing agent mm -hmm. and the new position would have been a budget analyst. Uh, instead, we've collaborated with the town manager and are looking maybe to change that up a little bit into the form of an assistant town manager position who would assist the town manager, the purchasing staff, and uh, the budget piece of it. Um, we've been trying to work over the past couple of years on benchmarking, and unfortunately, the, the workload has not allowed it for us to be able to actually complete that and get it out. Um, the most recent one we have is 2011. I think we have 99, 95% of 2013's done, and we really should be doing 2015 right now. So it's, you know, it's, it's just a matter of uh, staffing issues and, and workloads, really, that are preventing us from actually being able to spend the time to do that 
qualitative work. So we're hoping not only that this position would be able to take up some of that slack, but also to assist with other areas that were kind of being shortchanged on a little bit due to the. So, so just, mm -hmm. just for clarity though, so there were two positions, that's an ask that we're probably going to talk about later, but built into the budget we're looking at is this is this new position you just described, the uh, assistant? We put it in under the department requests, but it's, it was one of the positions that was removed under the manager's proposed budget, but it's one of the ones that hopefully we're going to discuss down the road. Uh, okay, because in the write-up, it, 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 it does talk see, it about it. It seemed like it was in there, so. It seems like it's, it's in there. Well, you know, at, at, but it's at not, one right. point I was talking to uh, one yeah. of the counselors and I said, oh, it's in here. And it's like, okay, the department column's not showing. Oh, but it's in here, but the department column's not showing. So the department column shows it, but it's not in this budget. So it's document. not in this budget we're looking at, but we'll Correct. talk about it. But we'll be. Okay. And it is in Section 9, Tab Exhibit 2. I believe it's like the very first one. Yeah, I, was, so. I was just confused by the narrative, so that, yeah. that helps. Thank you. Yes, and I apologize for no, that. No, no, it's fine. Just well, I made that change kind of late in the game. I yep. decided to kind of repackage them, and we tried to change the narrative to kind of reflect that late change, and some didn't get caught. That's fine. The, um, I was confusing myself, that's all. The, the overall budget in the finance department, including assessing, is, is roughly a 3.2% increase without the new positions. If I had to go through and say what is my biggest budget driver at this stage, it would be uh, training. We are looking to do some more training with our financial software to try and uh, we have packages that we're not fully utilizing, so we're trying to get more training involved in, on those pieces so that we can utilize that software to its fullest. Ruth, is that more like uh, vendor training, bringing people in, or is that more like a conference workshops kind of stuff or a combination probably of the? It's a combination of both. Some of it would be to have them come in or, and, and usually if we have, the last couple of times we've asked the software vendor to come in, uh, we've invited other communities, so they've shared in our costs. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's been helpful to us. We've asked other departments. Uh, the last one we did was what was the last one we did? <laughs> um, we had uh, Affordable Care Act and Affordable how to Care implement Act. it. South Portland came in. South Portland came in. School department came in. Um, our HR department was part of it also. So, you know, we have shared costs for all of that. I don't have any questions. This is a pretty simple budget. Straightforward. Um, no capital costs. Only 3.2% increase related to labor costs. The only uh, capital item uh, under assessing, and assessing is just here for kind of organizational purposes, is not for fiscal year 17, but at 18, we're looking yeah. at the town-wide reval, which is something we'd like to engage the council in um, sometime during the course of the next year so we can start to <coughs> up for that. I think our failure last time had a lot to do with little or no education around why we're doing it and the need to do it, and we really need to learn from that lesson and have a little better education campaign leading up to that ballot question. It is a voter approved um, mm -hmm. item. If the cost is greater than 400000 Right. If we go out to bond. Well, even if, the, even if it's paid down to tax, it still has to go to, because it's a one item. No, I don't believe so. I think it's required. It's indebtedness in excess of 400000 We can, we can talk capital about expenditure. Maybe not. We'll certainly. No research, I'm sure. We'll look at the charter. Um, but regardless, we need to do it differently than we did last time. Yeah. It scared the bejesus out of everybody. <laughs> well, and it was also the timing of it with the, yeah. with the budget last year. It was big numbers. So. Right. People who think that their houses are overvaluated are happy because they'll be under, you know, they'll go down, and people who are undervaluated, they're afraid that it's going to go up. <laughs> and the reality is the third go up, the third go down, the third stay the same. Right. This is how it kind of shakes out. So the last piece, if, you know, just to give kudos to my staff, we've received the uh, GFOA Certificate of Achievement and Excellence in re Financial Reporting for the oh, past great. 10 years, and uh, I think that says a lot for the Finance Department staff and all the work that they do. Congratulations. Nicely done. Excellent. Anything else? Just in two seconds. What is increase in snowmobile club payment? We have a snowmobile club. <laughs> what is that? We uh, we used to collect. We we from the state we we received like a buck for 
registering snowmobiles, ATVs, yeah. boats. Agent fee just for doing the paperwork. And the money that we've collected in the past, we used to used to reduce our property taxes. Somewhere along the line, um, a, so a Saco snowmobile club, which has trails all through mm. Scarborough, also requested the use of those funds to maintain their trails. And the uh, council, I believe, um, approved that. Uh, so. gotcha. yeah. It's just about five years ago, and there's a council action that still stands that yeah. all monies for that we collect. registration go directly to them for trail maintenance. They have to provide us with, which they haven't that. done this year yet, but they're supposed to provide us with uh, their costs. That was just more for curiosity. I just didn't, <laughs> didn't know it was a snowmobile club. Snowmobile club. Sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for yep. So with that, um, thank you everyone um, for their presentations. Um, we'll actually take up item number three, which will become item four, and um, look for move a uh, motion to approve the minutes from April 13, 2016, with any amendments. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? It's three to zero. Thank you. Uh, future dates, uh, meeting dates and times and items. There are three dates that are published. The first is Wednesday, April 27th from 7 to 9 p.m. It is the Town of Budget Forum that will be held at the High School Auditorium. Um, it is not um, advertised, or I should say it's not, um, it is not live. It will be taped and um, uh, published on our commercial, uh, sorry, our community cable channel, I believe. It was last year. Should be. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking whether we we'll can verify do that. live broadcast. I think we can at the auditorium. Mm -hmm. We'll try. And we can get community services to make popcorn too. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, it'll either be live or it'll at least be taped. Uh, we'll see what our capabilities are, but it will be uh, seen on air at some point so afterwards. What we really want is you to come and That's ask right. questions and right. we will answer them. Um, and the big piece is that um, to keep in mind is that um, everyone is welcome to. Uh, go online to our website. We do have a portal that's dedicated to the town's finance and the process that we're undertaking for the budget, and you can submit questions in advance. Um, just understand the reason why we ask for that isn't um, we do not screen the questions. Um, what we want to make sure is that we're prepared and we have the resources available to answer that question for you um, as thoroughly as possible, um, or that is permitted. Um, if it gets too legally, then of course we have some restrictions, but that is the reason why we ask for those. Um, then there's Wednesday, May 4th, we'll be discussing community services, administration, and public works. That is um, from 4 to 6 p.m. It is a Wednesday. And then also Wednesday, May 11th, from 4 to 6 p.m., that will be um, the staffing proposal review. All of the uh, new positions that were originally requested and may not necessarily be funded, we'll have a conversation around those, um, um, those positions, um, as well as have final recommendation of this council. I'm sorry. Um, final recommendation of the finance committee that we'll be forwarding on to the town council. So we have a busy schedule ahead. There's um, also, for your purposes, there's also the joint finance committee scheduled for the 28th. Oh, I didn't have that on. That's sorry, that yep. Thursday at two. Mm -hmm. And I believe an agenda has already been sent out, but we'll send it out again because it was a while. Yes, it has. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, any other items before we open to public comments? From Nothing. Um, the only thing I wanted to um, get an update on at some point, Tom, mm -hmm. um, one is, um, or I wanted to ask, um, one is in preparation for the 11th on the staffing proposal. On the assistant manager position, um, the conversation has been around that it might combine too. Can you have a comparison to when we did have a purchasing agent and what the revenue was? Um, um, you know, what is um, kind of, um, or, or savings, the cost savings, it wasn't revenue, it was cost savings, you know, what that position did for us so that we can have a comparison for that as well. Yeah, I'm not just sure if we ever quantified that, but I, I'll... If you, yeah, I could have sworn we'll that get it when I can. there's some conversation. Okay. Um, was hoping that we could get an update on the RFP regarding um, um, auditing services because that helps us with our benchmarking conversation because in that audit, sorry, in that RFP we did ask if they could price out what type of benchmarking that they could do um, for us as well, and that ties into the information that I handed out we last have week. Four or five respondents. Frankly, we've shelved it. We've been sitting on them for about three weeks, uh, trying to get through this piece. But, yep. um, yeah, we're ready to ramp back up on that. Once we get through some of these, then we'll have a full agenda, I'm sure. Yep. Um, with that, um, any public comments? Before we adjourn, anybody would like to speak? Not seeing any. We'll move on and. Um,
Any council comments before we move to adjourn? Any questions? No. Thanks, uh, for thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. <laughs> um, uh, move to adjourn. All in favor? Boy, you guys are slow. <laughs>